So in this next series, as you can see, I'm going to be making a pretty simple end table. Um, a book I like to keep around for reference is this cabinet making book, which is a little deceptive because it really shows you how to make tons of pieces of furniture. It's a great reference, which also has other references inside of it. This isn't a sponsored post or anything. I just like to um, highlight things that help me in my process. So apologies for no intro on this video. Um, I mentioned a couple a couple videos back that my car was kind of on the way out and it actually died recently so the time that I usually film the intros I was actually out car shopping so something I wanted popped up it worked out nicely I got it but that means I did not have time to film an intro but um, I'll get back to that next week so I started off by cutting down the legs for this the past couple projects I've been ordering out the legs from uh, uh, Rockler I believe I got these ones from but I've gotten them from other sources just makes life easier for me in this shop not to have to mill up thicker lumber like that they come ready to go I don't have to joint them or plane them so it just makes the process a little bit easier for this I'm joining all of my sides with mortise and tenon since the panels on this table are so long, I'm splitting up the tenons into two of them just so that they're less likely to um, move with seasonal humidity because the, the tenons are shorter than one longer tenon. And you also don't have to remove as much material from the edge of the piece with the mortar, making it uh, a little fragile on the edge there, especially since the customer wants the the edge is all flush so you could see the mortises are cheated pretty far to that one side. So I went through and I marked all of these beforehand because the front is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's Sometimes I don't completely mark these all up but on this one I did just to make sure I was cutting them in the right spots. So I could go through and do one edge of these pieces can see this is pretty simple work with the mortising machine this is a three inch bit I, a three eighths three eighths inch bit I have in there I went pretty deep down the, the sides of these so then the front is going to get side by side tenons there so I'm going through and I mark those the the bottom of this piece is going to have an open shelf and the top will have a drawer and she wanted them both to be exactly five inches wide the opening so that's just how I calculated all of these in the front and you could see on this one it was nice since these were spaced evenly I could do one side flip it and do it other on the mortising machine without having to actually move the fence makes the process a little bit easier so this piece is actually for the same customer that ordered the table from me that I fixed in the last week's video Luckily, I was able to repurpose a lot of the top. You could see just how bowed the top is um, while I'm cutting it down on my radial arm saw. If I hadn't cut these huge grooves in the bottom of the piece, in order to redo the top is similar to what I'm doing here. I would have cut it down into uh, lengthwise strips and then flipped and re-glued them so that the uh, grain on the end of the boards was oriented uh, every other that would have helped with with part of my cupping issue I don't think it was the main issue but it definitely did not help but like I said so for this little tabletop since the pieces are much smaller I can flip them because I don't have that center piece where I cut out all of that material so I'm just cutting these down into into smaller pieces and then you could see there's still quite a quite a severe amount of cupping in this so I decided to in fact cut these down where the joints are seamed and then um, flip every other piece and re-glue them. This was also another time I was pretty impressed with the water locks finish. I know one of, one of the things always commonly asked on here is about durable finishes and I'm cutting this up on multiple machines dragging it around my shop and there were very few to no scratches um, in this finish so then you could see those are my pieces I'm labeling them so they don't get mixed up because they're all quite similar sizes and now I could go through and flip one of one of the sides upside down and re-glue them now the problem with this process you could see is once you cut them because your that top was so cupped the angle on the table saw is still going to be a little off so even after I rip them down to size I'm going to resend them through the table saw now that the bottom surface is flat and get a straight edge on one side. 
like I said, if I was going, if that top I thought was fixable and the bottom didn't have those grooves in it, this is how I would have addressed fixing that top versus rebuilding the whole thing. But this in and of itself is kind of a long process. And then I could re-glue all those pieces. So then to make start making the tenons for this, once those pieces are glued, I always do a test piece on the radial arm saw. I get it so it fits quite snugly in there. You don't have to force it, but you do apply a little bit of pressure to get it to fit in there. So I'm cutting these tenons also on the radial arm saw. You can see I have a stop set up. Um, there are much, much faster ways to do this versus making all of these curve cuts, but this was the end of a day I believe it might have been on a Friday and sometimes I just don't feel like switching out blades or setting up jigs in my shop this is one of the easiest setups for cutting these and that's that's how I decided to do it I do have a tenoning jig which would have made this process a little bit faster so you can see I'm just making a series of curved cuts in this lumber um, the spacer makes it so that all the tenons are the same same width the blades raise so it's cutting to the same depth and and that is how i fit all my tenons in place so in order to get the marks for cutting these out i'm just lining them up with the mortise holes in the top of the piece and i could use a sharpie and a straight edge to to uh, carry those lines down to the side this once again could probably be done faster ways but for this i decided to hand saw um, it's not necessarily difficult to learn how to saw straightly and accurately, but I, it's something I always don't mind practicing because it's something you can always get better at. So little, little projects like this that could be cut on a machine, sometimes I choose to use the hand saw just to keep in practice with it. And then I could just drill a hole in that center piece and use a coping saw to, to knock out the excess. Now obviously all these need to be cleaned up a bit, but I usually dry fit stuff like this pretty quickly. And I also like to chamfer the edges just so that there's less friction on all the corners when, when dry fitting this together. It's pretty easy work with a, with a sharp chisel. So since these, these mortise holes are meeting in the back, you'll see I had to trim a little bit of the tenons off of the back piece because they were, they were hitting the tenons of the sides. Once I did that, this whole thing slid together pretty nicely. So then for the fronts, same exact thing. I'm using the same material. This is red oak. This is actually the red oak that I ordered for the new tabletop for the same customer. Um, since it's already finished, that's what I decided to use. And it was easy to make those marks and remove the excess on the table saw. Now it looks like I'm cutting past my mark, which technically I am, but that mark was a little bit lower than what I needed. So this, this is turning out to be the same size. And then this, this material was about 7 eighths of an inch thick versus 3 quarter. So you can see I have the, bra the blade raised slightly and I'm just removing about a 16th of an inch of material on either side so it will fit in those tenons because when I originally cut them I was calculating for 3 quarter inch material. Now obviously that needs to be cleaned up but it can fit, fit right in the piece and I could dry fit the whole thing together. So the doors on this are going to be inset. And in the second video, I'll show you how I tapered the legs. So this is basically the dry fit for the carcass. Now, like I said, all those all those tenons and whatnot have to be cleaned up. I usually don't film that 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 portion of it. So then for the top bar, I'm going to be joining it with another piece of that red oak, but I'm going to be putting a dovetail on it. Um, I've been using dovetails a lot for applications like this, just because once it's in the piece, it, it holds the whole that the end of that dovetail holds things together. They technically can't slide out because the end of it is wider than the, than the the front. So I just set my blade at a, I believe this was a 10 degree angle. I have a 10 in jig, and I apologize, my camera is moving moving on the table saw, hence the bad angle. And I just cut two two angles on that side, and then this was left a pretty thin shoulder so I just used a, a razor blade to remove the excess and then I'm left with that dovetail on, on either side. I had a little bit of cleanup to do with the shoulder but once again I could do that with with a sharp chisel and get that shoulder pretty square. Now this is going to be recessed back a little bit. You could see I marked where the drawer for it's going to come to 
just so that the drawer front can come to the top of the underside of the table, not the top of this rail. So I made my marks, I removed the excess with uh, a spade bit just to make the process of chiseling go a little bit faster. It's always a longer process when you're chiseling down into, into end grain. So like I said, I could remove the bulk. I have a little piece of tape on there as a, as a depth marker. And then I could pop the legs off, um, put them in my clamp, and uh, remove, remove the rest of that material. So then, like I said, this is in the clamp. I'm going to saw down my straight lines so that I can uh, get, get a head start on the chiseling work. So this will create a pretty nice, pretty nice straight edge to work off of with the chisel. See, I just go through the front and then remove that material. With using that spade bit, this was pretty, pretty fast work. And then just dry fit it, remove a little bit, and dry fit it some more. And then this top rail is basically the end of the outer skeleton. In the next video, I'll cover making the drawer, finishing up the shelf, because the bottom, like I said, is opening shelf. I'm starting the top and then obviously doing all the finishing work. You can see I could hammer that into place and then it's going to hold that front together really well with those dovetails. One-handed work is always, always the worst views in, uh, in these videos.